Okay, we'll get this one started uh, with Charles Odom, followed by Anthony Dasher. Following up on the, your return to practice this week, um, how different has it been adjusting to a practice week without your normal Tuesday practice? I mean, we, we, we kind of did have a normal Tuesday practice, it just wasn't on Tuesday. Uh, so it, it hasn't been really, really too much different. We just had like a little extra day to um, get our bodies right, you know, uh, a little, little bit more of a mental day. So you'll be skipping Wednesday instead of Tuesday, I guess. Yeah, we ain't really skip. We ain't really skip that one either. <laughs> okay. Hey, Nicobe, good to see you. I want to ask you about uh, about Monty just a, a little bit. Uh, what kind of role he's kind of played this week, kind of getting you guys ready? I'm just curious. He hadn't called a team meeting or anything like that to kind of get you all revved up, has he? Uh, I mean, he talked to the team. You know, he addressed the team about uh, how uh, some guys we got to step up. You know, we got to play definitely with uh, guys being out and everything and uh, basically hitting that midpoint of the season, how, how we got to uh, start elevating our game. Mm -hmm. Did he, well, was he, I, I, know, I know you don't want to say exactly what he, what he said, but was, was this been like the first time he's ever done that type of thing? And what kind of effect do you think that he had with y'all? I mean, uh, he, he, talked, he talked to the team originally, not, not like probably just all the time like he did then, but he, he, he often talks to the team. And, I mean, of course, he had a fit. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he had a lot of the young guys knowing they got to step up and uh, we're going to need them more this season than they probably thought we would. Thanks, man. Okay, let's go to Seth Emerson, followed by Jake Rowe. Nicobe, how does Florida's offense try to make a defense defend the whole field, and how does that make it kind of a unique challenge? For yeah, the you know, uh, Florida, Florida got playmakers, you know, uh, all over the field at every position. You know, I feel like uh, it is, uh, we just got to – really kind of focused on us. I mean, we focus on us and everybody do they one eleven, their job, and I feel like and we just go out there with, if we practice with a purpose every day, I feel like we'll be okay. We'll be good, great. Kobe, the, this defense, uh, you know, last time you guys faced an explosive offense, you, you kind of gave up some explosive plays. Um, and I know that's a really big emphasis for, for this defense. Um, how do you limit those? Uh, how do you limit those against a team like Florida with, where there are kind of matchup issues all over the place? And, uh, and, and what kind of goes into making sure that you don't let them, you know, get behind you, get through you, all that stuff? I mean, we just got to take care of our job. Just, it just hits back on just doing uh, – everybody doing their one living. You know, if everybody having their uh, they job and execute to the level that we uh, are expected to execute, and then I feel like we'll be, uh, we'll be great, we'll be good. Okay, let's go to Mike Griffith, followed by Jillian McIntyre. Uh, yeah, Nicole, I, I, I couldn't recollect last year's game. I, I know you, you were one of the highest rated guys in pass coverage. Did, did you ever get caught on uh, pits in any matchups last year? And, and what about your role in a game like this? You mentioned the playmakers everywhere. Is this a game that really tests your pass coverage skills? Uh, they, they do uh, a lot. They do make a lot of uh, matchups. Make you uh, play ball, you know. Make you play man, make you play man ball, and everything like that. And I and about that uh, get matched up on pitch. I can't really remember if if it, what, if I did or not really last year. So, mm -hmm. is, is that something? That, I, I guess I would just ask you. I mean, is that something? I don't know. Relish is the right word. I mean, he's such a, a scary first round projected guy. Would would that be the sort of challenge? I mean, if I'm sure that wouldn't be the game plan, but like you said, they do a lot of motions and shifts. I mean. What would you think about trying to cover a guy like that? And what, what would be the key to covering a guy like that? I mean, yeah, you know, he's a great player. You know, he's a uh, big player for their team. He's very good for their uh, team, definitely. But uh, we – just like we got – we practice uh, cover guys every day, you know. Um, we cover some of the uh, – I feel like – me personally, I feel like uh, some of the best players in the SEC every day. I feel like – feel like just practice the way we practice with prayers to uh, cover anybody. Hey, Nicobe, um Last year, the Kentucky game was also a slow, heavy ground game. And you were also going into Florida with one loss. So um, with the same kind of position this year, what do you make of that, if anything, being kind of the same position? 
I feel like uh, just, just like we do every week, we just go out and prepare for each team, you know, uh, prepare for their game plan. You know, coach has got a great game plan for us. We just got to uh, continue to practice, learn it, uh, get extra film in and everything like that, and uh, keep working. And I feel like uh, practice, practice and everything will prepare us for this game. Okay, let's go to Chip Towers, followed by Palmer Tones. Yeah, Nakobe, not to uh, beat the, the tight end thing to death, but the, you're a linebacker. Linebackers often cover tight ends. Tight ends are awful, also, off, are very often huge, and Kyle Pitts is particularly huge and particularly fast. I just want you're good at it. You're a cover guy at linebacker. How do you handle that? You're not six six. So uh, just what what is what is kind of the secret to, to being able to to do your job? Man, basically just regular regular uh, man technique. Basically, you know, uh, just being and being aggressive. You know, we got to be aggressive, uh, hands on type of uh, coverage. You know, uh, stuff like that. And basically, just the way the way the uh, coach has been teaching us since I got here how to play the man to man technique. I don't think I can uh, rely on rely on my technique and everything else like that. I'm gonna ask more about Kyle Pitts. Um, <laughs> With that being the case and him being such an emphasis this week, who is someone that does, like, you know, replicate that on the scout team? How is that something that the scout team can replicate? And is that a situation where y'all might be practicing more against, you know, y'all's ones and, and Darnell Washington and a big guy like that than, uh, you know, say the guys who would normally run scout team? Uh, I mean, we, we got some – we got some – uh, it's not one specific guy who uh, – they got replicated, but we got uh, a lot of multiple guys that we uh, that we got uh, basically replicated. He's just doing the type of routes he do. We got, and we just basically with that we just uh, just covering using the game plan the coaches gave us. Do any of those guys on scout team specifically come to mind this week? Uh, specifically come to mind? Oh, there's a few. I mean, there's a few. I, I no nobody specifically comes to mind, but. Uh, definitely a few guys who are uh, just the, basically the same, same type, same probably the same type of that we uh, got every week for uh, for uh, when we practice for scout team. Okay, we got time for two more. Let's go to Lance McCurley followed by Brandon Sudge. Hey, Nicole, uh do you guys ever get contacted by you know former players to tell you um, just how like? big this game is, you know, not just this season or this Saturday, but, you know, just the Florida game, the annual rivalry game in Jacksonville every year, just in general? Well, uh, me personally, I, I haven't really have, uh, had any contact from a former player about how important this game was, but uh, D. Walk actually came and talked uh, talk to the team um, this this uh, Tuesday. He actually came yesterday, actually. He, just, he came and talked to the team. And basically, like, kind of spilled out his heart, how he felt about certain things going on with with us and everything. So, just me, I didn't personally know him and everything because he left before I got here. But just hearing him talk, and uh, yeah, I could tell he was coming from his heart and everything like that. Um, Kobe. Um, so in terms of Richard, um, and his injury, um. So as a younger guy and somebody who has gotten advice from Richard, somebody, I mean, is he's like a leader of the defense. Um, how um, can you take me through kind of what your emotions were and the things that kind of ran through your mind as that injury happened on Saturday evening, like after his accident? Oh yeah, you know, uh, it was shock. It was. I mean, I was shocked. I mean, of course, uh, you know, I could send him a brother, brother on the team, so. Uh, when when I heard about it, of course I was just like anybody else on the team. I wanted to hear like, uh, was he okay? How how was he doing? And everything like that. And we knew it was gonna be a, a huge blow to the team. But uh, in at, the, at that point, the last thing I was worried about was him getting back on the field with us. I was just worried about him being healthy and him being safe and uh, and everything like that. Definitely hearing uh, what type of accident it was, you know, uh, I I just prayed for him and everything like that. So that was it was great that he's uh good and. Good spirits. Okay, Nakobe, I appreciate your time tonight and appreciate everybody's patience uh, waiting to, to get us.